Rams of Purdue, 14 and 1, ranked fifth in the nation against Iowa, 16 and 0, ranked number one in this week's Associated Press poll. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and welcome to a madhouse in West Lafayette, Indiana, for one of the great games we hope to see all year. So much riding on this national ranking and a share of the Big Ten lead. And Dick Vitale, this is crazy. I know you love both of these ball clubs, but for different reasons. Mike, it's absolutely a zoo here right now. I can't hear you. It's unbelievable. I got to like Purdue starting five. I think it's the best starting five in America. On the other side, I look at Iowa. They have tremendous depth. They got four guys that come off the bench that can start with most schools in America. The good doctor, Tom Davis, got a loaded task. But I got a feeling this crowd in Bedlam is going to be the difference tonight and not let Purdue lose. When you get into a game like this, it is so important with so many different things on the line. A lot of times the point guards are the people that make the difference. We got two dandy point guards. We got an outstanding penetrator in P.J. Armstrong and another one in Elvin Stevens. Mike, I can't hear you. It's Bedlam. It's wild. Maybe we should just wait a while, although I think this is going to keep up. How, how about the fatigue factor when you, when you talk about this ball game? I don't believe it's a factor at all. Gene Cady has a great conditioning program. It's one of the most unique in America. They utilize the pool. They swim. They run distance. They run for sprints. They're in great shape. That's nothing more than an alibi or excuse if Purdue were to lose. Gene Cady said, we are ready. Dr. Tom Davis says he's ready. You're ready. I'm ready. Let's play ball. <laughs> well, we hope you're ready, too, because it ought to be a dandy from West Lafayette, Indiana. And we'll be back with Purdue against Iowa right after these messages. ESPN's College Basketball, Iowa at Purdue. Brought to you by the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Brought to you by the Acura Legend and Integra, exclusively at your Acura dealer. By the Coca-Cola Company and bottlers of Coca-Cola Classic. It's red, white, and you. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. Welcome back to Mackey Arena in West Lafayette, Indiana. The place is sold out. There's a foot of snow on the ground. We have had a midwinter Indiana blizzard, but you couldn't keep these people away with anything. Purdue comes in at 14 and 1. Iowa 16 and 0. Let's get the starting lineups from Rick Miles. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Here now, the starting lineup for this evening's game. For Iowa, and forward a six foot five inch sophomore from Flint, Michigan, number 23, Roy Marble. For Purdue at forward, a six foot five inch senior from Washington, Illinois, number 20, Doug Lee. For Iowa, at forward a seven foot senior from Glendale, Arizona, number 54, Brad Loha. For Purdue and forward, a six foot seven inch junior from Toledo, Ohio, number 33, Todd Mitchell. For the Hawkeyes at center, a six foot eight inch sophomore from Springfield, Illinois, number 25, Ed Horton. For the Boilermakers at center, a six foot ten inch sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 35. For the Hawkeyes, at guard, a six foot six inch senior from Springfield, Illinois, number 35, Kevin Gamble. For the Boilermakers, at guard, a six foot two inch junior from Evanston, Illinois, number 21, Everett Stevens. And for Iowa, at guard, a six foot two inch sophomore from Detroit, number 10, B.J. Armstrong. And for Purdue at guard, a six foot four inch junior from Anderson, Indiana, number 23, Boy Lewis. Head coach of the Hawkeyes in his first season at Iowa is Tom Davis. And the head coach of the Boilermakers in his seventh season at Purdue, Gene Petty. 
number one Iowa against number five Purdue coming up from West Lafayette, Indiana on ESPN. Stay with us. Mike, they need productivity from Moen right off the bench. Sir Jamalot right gives them a great leaper. Mo, to me, is the best sixth man in basketball, a tenacious defender. They must contain Lewis. They can't allow Lewis to get that jump shot and get his rhythm flowing. On the other side, you look at Purdue, they got to handle the Iowa's trapping defenses. They know they're going to be trapped full time all over the court, and they must neutralize. Iowa has a great rebounding team. They've been out-rebounding teams, 45 rebounds to 33 a game. We're set with a really tenacious battle, and the officials are going to be a very important factor in this game. Mike. This is the first time an Iowa basketball team has ever been rated number one. The last time Purdue defeated a number one ranked team was January 13, 1979 when they beat Michigan State on a 40-footer at the buzzer. And that team featured a fair player by the name of Magic Johnson. Purdue with the opening tip. This is Mitchell working outside, and Purdue is probably going to have to do it from the perimeter now. I can't believe the matchup already. Armstrong playing Doug Lee. Lee with the big size factor should post Armstrong inside. And we've got a three-second violation called against Purdue. Lee, of course, had a great game yesterday against Louisville, 23 points. He broke the game open with his perimeter jump shot, Mike. He's an outstanding long-range shooter as well as a post-up player. This is B.J. Armstrong. He's picked up by Everett Stevens, point guard against point guard. And we'll get a five-second count. If you guard a player and you're six feet away from him, he has five seconds to make penetration with that dribble. Excellent call by the official. Good defensive pressure by Purdue. Iowa will come after you on defense. 94 feet for the entire game. Marble checking Troy Lewis. That's an interesting matchup. Marble, a great jumper, but not really a skilled defender. Lowhouse lays off Mitchell when he's 15 feet away from the basket. This is Lewis had the shot blocked. Great defense by Lewis. Lowhouse is one of the most improved players in America. He's finally getting a starting role. And Lee commits to personal. The senior from Washington, Illinois, gets his first reaching in on Roy Marble. He made my all Kurt Rambis team. I really believe he's one of the real tenacious players in America. Plays with a lot of intensity, number 20. Uh, Mr. Lee also went to Texas A&M and transferred here after two years under Shelby Metcalf. Non-shooting foul. We're still scoreless with 18.54 to go. Look at the long arms of Everett Stevens defensively, number 21. This is Lowhouse. Very tentative, both clubs, Mike. Not really looking for their shot. Marble with a drive on Lee. He's an explosive player. He's a mini version of Michael Jordan. He's got the great legs. He's a Skywalker from Flint, Michigan. Been the most valuable player in three tournaments this year. Yeah, he rises for the big games. He's a beat tier, a big time performer. Lewis. And Iowa very, very tough on the boards. And there's the first foul inside. And they'll pick it up on McCants. Phil Bova is calling it very close right now as we look at the doctor. Tom Davis came here from Stanford University. Loved his stay at Stanford. Certainly one of the most prestigious universities in America. But over here has a little better chance to win because he can get a better quality athlete due to the difference in academics. Oh, back screen. Great play. Marble makes it 4 to nothing, And number one, Iowa has the lead. Marble's got the great wheels, Mike. This is Lee. They gotta go down to McCants. They gotta get it to the big fella. They gotta get him involved in their offense. Look at B.J. Armstrong twist this. End to end for Armstrong. They love to run, and here comes Lewis back the other way. Yes, got the basket and the foul. Good transition basketball after the score. Here comes Troy Lewis, normally a pull-up jump shooter, takes the ball on a drive. Defensive player doesn't have his feet planted. Good call, and Lewis says, I love it. Foul was on Horton, his first. Lewis was cold Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, along with a guy by the name of Delray Brooks, who initially went over to a, a Bloomington, Indiana, and right. played for the general, but is now starring for Ricky Patino in the Providence Friars. Lewis. Exceptional free throw shooter. That's a three-point play. 
Full court pressure. Watch number 21. Is he a tough defender? Long arms. He's a great shot blocker. One of the best shot blockers. Look at him trying to lay a screen on him. Number 21, Stevens. Leading shot blocker on this ball club. Yeah, 34 last year from the guard spot. That's unheard of. Armstrong trying to set up the offense in oh. a double screen out high and let him go one on one behind the back. <laughs> Lowhouse had it tipped in and then it is tipped in by Kevin Gamble. Kevin Gamble on the glass gives him an extra rebounder at the big guard slot. But that was a simple screen and roll. Steven. Love him. I really believe this backcourt makes great music. They're number three on my list right now behind the Eminem boys and number one, the Tar Heels. Armstrong the other way. I thought they missed a walk-in violation. Hey, don't turn your head. You could miss six, eight points. 16.51 to go in the half. It's 10-7. Mitchell. They're all on fire. Versatility. Well, great players rise for games like this, Mike. The adrenaline flows. These kids really flat out love this kind of environment. Lowhouse, who is a good perimeter player. Seven feet, 235. He got a new lease on life under Tom Davis. Good pass inside. The ball stripped and stolen as they took it away from Gamble. Lowhouse is an excellent passer because of his great size. Lewis missed the jumper, and the long rebound goes to Gamble, who was trailing the play. D.J. Armstrong wants the rock. Look at this. For three. This one won't go. Knocked out of bounds and out to Purdue. Look at these kids. Are they going wild? The mother sends them here for engineering. They say, forget engineering tonight. It's hoop hysteria. Now, that was a schematic drawing. You just misunderstood it. <laughs> Look at this intense guy right here, Mr. Intensity. He's already in mid-second half form. These two intensity, what Irvin Berlin is to music. <laughs> 16.05 to go first half, a one-point game. Purdue down by a point, but with the basketball. I were going to a half-court trap. Number 20 in the game. Mo is a really a hustling player. That was Arnold who checked in for Purdue. Miss, Mitchell misses, but Arnold. If they get any positive play out of Arnold off the bench, he's a space eater, and he's a real tough kid who doesn't possess a lot of jumping ability or quickness. This is Mo, a former starter, who likes coming off the bench and played very well doing it. Listen to this crowd. Fifteen twenty-nine to go, first half. It's a one-point game. Four principles of Purdue's defense is to deny the ball. Watch number 20 trying to deny the ball to Roy Marble, but he makes a major mistake. He turns his head. He doesn't see the ball. He runs into a back screen by Lowhouse, and there's the great jumping ability of Roy Marble. What well, set that up for the youngsters out there, you cannot turn your head. You must see the ball in your man at all times. A major mistake in that series by Doug Lee. And the kind of things that Lowhouse does that don't show up in the box score the next morning. Here comes the fame pressure, full court. They throw right over the top of the... And Mitchell threw it right through the hands of Doug Arnold. That's a tough pass by Mitchell. You got to use, instead of the air ball, you got to throw the bounce pass. Pressure the other way, and into the ball game for the first time is Bill Jones, the 6'7 junior. That's a big point guard there. He's from Detroit, Michigan. He started a lot last year. Here's a feed inside. The foul's going to be on Doug Lee. That will be number two on Doug Lee. Also in there is number three, Gary Wright. They're trying to isolate Marble. There's Mo. There's Mo now penetrating. And there's Marble. They try to throw the lob over the top against Lee. Lee rides him. He says, who, me? Don't you realize I was a star of stars yesterday? Al Lorenzo, number 44, is also in there. What a bench they have, Mike. You're talking about McDonald's High School All-Americans, Lorenzen, and kids like Mo and coming off the bench. That's quality. They're just loaded. Lorenzen gets it to Gary Wright. And right down the lane. Serge Amelot, he said his mom and dad are watching in Austin, Texas. He was their best all-around player last year. Some would say Andre Banks. Here's the full court trap. Good job by Lewis. The advantage against the press. Mitchell had it rejected. And here come the Hawkeyes. Marble. Oh, what an acrobatic play. That's why they label him as a mini version of Michael Jordan. Marble 
with an acrobatic ballerina move. Crowd wanted a foul in that last possession. This is Tony Jones in to run the club to Lewis. Lewis on the line. They're really getting rattled by the pressure. They're beating the front line of the pressure, but they're not able to convert. And an excellent, he wants them to settle down now. I thought he was going to get the timeout to try and settle them down against the pressure. He got Everett Stevens back in the game at point guard and took out his freshman from Fort Wayne, Tony Jones. I've been harping about how he's irreplaceable when you talk about Stevens. They got to find someone to back him up to give him legitimate quality time if they're going to be able to head for Bourbon Street. Got a foul inside on Al Lorenzen pushing off. He shoved Kip Jones, number 30, who's checked into the ball game, and it's going to be musical chairs for both of these coaches tonight. Look at a foul right here now. There goes the screen. That's a moving screen. You cannot move into the path of the offensive player. You must be stationary when laying that screen, Mike. Against the pressure, they get it up to Jones. Pump fake, missed the shot. Arnold follows and gets the foul. Kip Jones is an aggressive player, labeled Indiana Jones when he comes off the bench. What you want to really do against the pressure, you want to utilize your post-up move. They're going to post Lewis now right to the middle of the floor as one of their options. And now you've got the numbers. He's got four guys trailing him. Now he finds the open man. He runs the 45-degree angle. Might have taken a little hopscotch there for a little extra step, yep. and they missed it. Arnold will go to the free throw line, only averaging four points a game and shooting only 53% from the strike. Mike, for Iowa, they had that injury. Didn't look good shooting that free no. throw at all. But, you know, Iowa had that injury to right when he injured that hand coming out of a classroom building. He dislo dislocated two bones and he fractured three on his shooting hand. He's a left-handed player. And you talk about one of the great Skywalkers and slam jam yeah. bammers in America. Missed 11 games. Here's a look at Arnold, what he's done from the free throw line. Just does not look very comfortable. Got that one. And it's 14-13. Make it 14-12. I just love the deep. Look at the screens they're trying to set on Stevens. They respect him so much defensively. Number 21. He's got the long arms. Bill Jones gets it to right. Back to Jones. Both clubs run a passing game. They try to get a little motion. Now they're stationary. There's that one. Yeah, he lifted his pivot foot. That's one of the points of emphasis this year by the officials. Pretty to watch, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty. This is an NBA move. He's in the NBA. He gets away with it. But he takes that extra little shuffle and stop, a little showboat, a little mustard. Get the, hey, get the hot dogs out, baby. Here's the steal by Wright. He'll pull up for the jumper this time. Purdue with a chance to tie. Everett Stevens, the junior from Evanston, Illinois, running the club in the backcourt with Troy Lewis, 23. And Troy Lewis buries one. They rotated into a zone defense. They went into their 3-2 zone, and Lewis got right in the open seam and drilled the baseline jet. Lewis, who averages 18, has five. Bill Jones. Moe with a follow. He had it blocked, and the foul is going to be on Tony Jones. Look at him pumping his fist. He told me today he's playing the video machine over in the hotel. <laughs> he loves the video machine. He said, I get pumped up for Indiana and for Purdue because they didn't recruit me. And there's Jones with the little roll inside. And there's number 20. Is he a tough kid? Goes up, gets fouled on a play. They got a technical on Katie on the sideline. It will be a two-shot technical. Two shots when called on a coach on the sideline. One shot if called on a player on the floor. And Mo is really pumped, and so is Gene Cady. Oh, he told me today, he said, I get excited when I play against the Hoosiers at Purdue. Look at him waving that fist. He had 24 against Bob Knight's team last year and sparked him to a winner. Now he'll get two more. He's got a nice touch. He's got nice rhythm. This is nice like touch. practice, isn't it? Look at Cady. Look at Gene. Oh, is he mean? He's a football player, this guy. Mo hits four straight, two technicals and two free throws, and it's 18-14 Iowa. And then he goes out and slaps skin with all his teammates. The coach says, nice job, Jeff. Notice how they deny on the wings, Mike. They have four principles to their defense. Horton is back in there. He lost it. Well, he picked up his dribble, and he walked with the ball. Jody Sylvester with a good call. And Tom Davis telling his club to calm down. What an advantage he has, Dick. 
being able to go that deep to his bench, bring in five guys, and not just bring them in, five guys who can play. Oh, they're legitimate players. I believe if you took that team as a unit, they could win 20 games at the high major level. Maybe not at the big time level like the Big Ten, but at a, many institutions, they'll win 20 games this season. Good feet inside to Arnold, they banked it home. They're getting good play out of Arnold, and if you can rotate and get some good play from Arnold and McCants, that makes them that much more effective. They lost it out of bounds. Nice feed by Armstrong. They just couldn't hold it. Well, this guy's a fighter. Between Gene Cady and this crowd, I don't believe Purdue will get out of here with an L. This crowd and Cady will not allow it to happen. Another two-on-one, and Steven ties it. Forte is that pressure defense, and it's killing them right now. It's hurting them. They're getting the numbers against it. They're not playing with the ball in the backcourt to face the traps. Low house. Takes Kip Jones away from the basket. Good pass to Gamble. Isn't he a pretty passer he for sure a seven-footer? He looks right over the top of the defenses. See, what they're doing, they're trying to get the ball away from the traps. And they really worked on this Thursday and Friday of last week. Rather than preparing for Louisville, they prepared two days for Iowa. Lewis had a three-pointer, passed it up. Tony Jones doesn't get the roll. Ball knocked out of bounds. It's out to Iowa. Tony Jones has been coming in with some quality time lately, and they need it from Tony Jones. Timeout, 11.54 to go in the half. Purdue trails Iowa by two. Tomorrow night, another big doubleheader. The first game, Louisville playing host to Virginia Tech. That's followed by a big ACC matchup. Clemson and Georgia Tech. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific. Everybody in the ACC wants to know if Clemson is for real. And the easy part of their schedule is over. They're going to start playing the big boys very soon. Speaking of big, look at this. Oh, they got a picture of you. I can't believe that. You know why I drew that, and I'm not good in art. And I asked them, I said, please post that up there. No, I'm really, I can't believe these kids. They must have done that a couple of days ago. There's no snow on your head. <laughs> and there's a foot of it outside. Iowa winning the battle of the offensive rebounds, 6-2. to two. Notice the screen. They bring it the back court to try and free Armstrong against the pressure of Stevens. Moe stays in there with Armstrong. Right number three checks back in. 23, Roy Marble, who has the ball in the corner, stays in the lineup for Tom Davis. They switch defensively. Stevens now playing Moe. He beats Moe. Moe, good pass. Surprised his own man. Hit him in the face with it. And the ball is out of bounds, and Roy Marble is down. He didn't see it coming, Dick. Watch the penetration. We look at the penetration by Moe right now. Marble is thinking shot. Mo with the excellent kickoff bangs right off his face. He made a great pass there. This kid, look how aggressive and tough. Now there's Marble. He's isolated. He's concentrating. He's looking for the ball. Now he's thinking shot. Takes his eye off the ball. Hits him square in the, squarely in the face. And Mo loses the ball. Goes out of bounds. Good call by Phil Bowles. Marble's another one of your superstars out of Flint. Yeah, he's from out of Flint, Michigan, where they got Glenn Rice, who was brilliant yesterday in beating the Orange Men of Syracuse for Bill Frieda's, uh, you know, you talk about the Big Ten, I think that shows you how tough the Big Ten is. You look at Michigan beating Syracuse, certainly I don't call that an upset, Mike. Michigan playing on their home floor, there are very few upsets today in major college basketball. I'm sure tonight, if Purdue were to win, we'll see a headline somewhere. Purdue upsets the number one Iowa Hawkeyes. No upset at all, not playing here in Mackey Arena. 11.27 to go in the first half. We'll check on Roy Marble in a moment. Our score is Iowa 20, Purdue 18. Roy Marble on the sideline being attended to by the medical staff. Let's take a look at the replay again. There's Mo. It looks like it hits him right in the right eye. There's the pass. It's a heavy ball he has thrown. They were working on his right eye on that sideline. Let's hope that... He's okay. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to speculate from way up here. But it looks like maybe they're... And slow motion, it looked like you wondered how could he miss it. But if you played it in regular motion the way it was during the game, you can see that thing got there in a hurry. He took his eye off the wall. He was thinking shot there at the last moment, then pass. And it was that split second that Mo drilled the ball. And it looks like they're working on the right eye. And he's able to see a little bit better right now. When they first got him to the bench, he couldn't open it at all. And now he looks like it's just a little bit teary. I think he'll be back in there pretty quickly. 
You got a good look at Doug Lee talking to Gene Cady. Lee hasn't been able to play much because he picked up two fouls in a hurry. Iowa leading Purdue by a pair. It's been a fast-paced, exciting game so far. And the turnover department, Iowa, double what Purdue has turned it over. Iowa goes to that full court pressure. They put Low House at the baseline at seven feet to bother the inbounds ball. They're doing a good job, I think, handling the pressure. There's Every three, Stevens, especially. There are three things you'd like to do against pressure, and it's ball reversal, post up move, and a diagonal pass. And they utilize them in their offensive concepts. Stevens tried to get it inside to McCants, who's back in the ball game. The pass ahead of the pack to Gamble. Oh, what a champ. Gamble's got big time legs, a very strong player. He and Horton played together in Springfield, Illinois. There's the trap, and he just splits the trap. He has no problem with the trap, but they come from behind and lost his concentration. Mo went into the photographers, and Armstrong has it to Low House. Oh, what a great play. Excellent timing. Great vision by B.J. Armstrong. And it's 24-18. Iowa's lead up to six. Three-pointer. Rebound to McCants, and they'll keep it alive. Lewis would like to hit a couple of those. This is Jones with the left hand. Follows his own shot. And we've got a foul inside against Iowa. Purdue has got to get some inside basketball going. they got to score inside. You look at Iowa. Iowa's right now a spurt basketball team. There's the great look by Armstrong and the excellent timing by Lowhouse. What an improved player. Brad Lowhouse, if you saw him play in the past, he was nothing more than just a role player, a complimentary player, and now he is becoming a real, real contributor in a real positive way, and I think he's becoming a first-round draft choice, Brad Lowhouse. Foul was on right. They have taken Roy Marble to the locker room to work on his eye. Free throw by Kip Jones is no good. Marble is the leading scorer on the ball club. I was a very tough club especially coming from behind, down 22 against the Fighting Illini up in Champaign, and he came back in the second half after being down 61-39. They bring the tough lead back on the floor. They also were down, I did the game, 14 with about four minutes to go against Jimmy Valvano's North Carolina State team and won the game. Well, the comeback against Illinois has to rate as one of the uh, great comebacks in their rich basketball tradition. See, it's great to pressure teams that pressure you, especially if you got the kind of club that can pressure. And that's why Gene Cady is returning the favor with pressure now. The ball was kicked by Everett Stevens. And it will be out to Iowa. The Hawkeyes up 24-19 with 10-10 to go. They recycle the shot clock yeah, you back to 45. You recycle it after a kicking violation or if you utilize the fist in knocking the ball out of bounds. Gamble, nice pass inside, right. Jones trying to follow. And they'll call a foul on Bill Jones. Bill Jones gives them a big rebound. They're also from the guard spot. Look at the post position. Great post position. Tremendous legs right there by Sir Jamalot. And there's Jones inside, rebounding at 6'7", but he pushes off Jimmy Burr with a good call. And here's a great steal by Armstrong. Terrific anticipation, and he'll shoot it himself. Horton muscled up the follow. Got it again. And now he's fouled. They're beating Purdue to the glass. They really are an outstanding rebounding team. We talked about as one of the keys tonight, Iowa's rebounding 45 to 32 against its opposition. It's tough to beat clubs when they get second and thirds. Look at this horse coming inside. Eddie Horton, he goes up for the second time and gets banged right on the wrist. Arnold committed the personal. Horton is not much of a shooter, but he is a bull on the glass. He was running around the hotel today, teasing everyone, he said, Come on, Coach Vitale. Convince talk Dr. Tom to recruit my brother. He's averaging 25 a game. In and out on that one. You know, I don't think you need a hotel room. All you need is a lobby pass. <laughs> I have a you ball in the lobby. never go to the room anyhow. I have a ball in the lobby. Here comes the zone right now by Iowa. And they got the big guy at the point of it. Jones at 6'7". Look at those warm arms. He takes away the perimeter jump shot. And the police shoots right over the top. He likes that shot from that angle. I tell you, they put the big guy there to bother Lee, but it doesn't bother him at all. Quickly back the other way, and the shot is blocked out of bounds. Armstrong had it stuffed by Everett Stevens, the club's leading blocker. Stevens is such a rejector. He's got more rejections than a dean of the Harvard Business School. Look at him go up, number 21. 
as he got long arms. What a great shot blocker. And Stevens comes out of the ball game and gets a round of applause. Coach Wood taps him on the head. Coach Weber's sitting next to him. He said, hey, I want to get back on the floor. I don't want to sit on the sideline. The 20th block of the season. And Iowa has an answer in a hurry. Iowa just keeps coming at you with so many players. Got a whistle. And that's not a walk. That is not a walking violation. You're entitled to run the after baseline the basket. after a score. On any violation, you cannot move when the official hands the basketball. He can run that sideline. Yes, he can run and move there. I think the official made a mistake and then just corrected it. Here's the steal. They have to play Everett Stevens. Can't keep him on a bench, Mike. They will not attack this pressure with Everett Stevens on a sideline. Offensive foul on Armstrong. Armstrong's got to be getting a little frustrated. He's made some great steals and hasn't finished one off yet. There's a little shake and bake. He can't finalize the play, but Lee does a great job getting defensive positioning. Both feet are planted on the ground. Took a lot of guts for Lee to do it. He's working with two fouls here in the first half. There's the post-up play I'm talking about. Getting the ball in the middle of the floor. And they'll call a foul on Gamble as he got tied up with Lewis, and Lewis went down. Purdue is doing a very poor job in conversion. They are not converting when they have the wave of three-on-one, three-on-two. They're dribbling just a little bit too much rather than getting the ball up the court. What a start for Tom Davis. Usually, you come to a school for the first year, the cupboard is bare. Here, he found it loaded, made some of his own adjustments. They're only 16 and up. He's done a tremendous job as we look at Mo coming on the floor, but don't forget the job that George Raveling has sure. done as a salesman. George Raveling's going to get it done at the University of Southern Cal, one of the real quality people in coaching, and he just gave this club a tremendous lift when he left in terms of the kind of personnel he left them. I mean, he just left them a tremendous group of athletes. Lewis hits the free throw. Tom Davis will be the first to tell you that. In fact, today at lunch with John Feinstein and the writer from the Washington Post who wrote that book on Bob Knight, he was sitting with Tom Davis and myself, and he was talking to Tom, and Tom gave a lot of credit to George Ravlin. Free throw is good again by Lewis. Hey, where has been Mr. Mitchell? Mr. Mitchell's been AWOL. I haven't seen Todd Mitchell, one of the most versatile players in the Big Ten. It is so tough to go inside against Iowa. They're just loaded with beef and, and talent. Mitchell's been AWOL a, a way without leave. They got to get him right in the inside and start playing. Number 33. You got Stevens back in the ball game, and this is Bill Jones who's in to run the ball club. I knew they had to bring him in. He's so important to this club. Look at the screen they try to set on him, number 21. Arnold picks him up. I love Stevens. He's my kind of player, number 21. Mo had to force it up. Offensive rebound, follow twice. Moe's in there again, got a hand on it. Somebody else, that was uh, Lowhouse. Gene Cady said today that was one of the keys. He was really concerned with the way Iowa attacks and pounds the boards. Look at these people. They spread their body. They're super strong. Look at Horton. They go up. There's Lowhouse at seven feet. He's become a scrapper. He used to be a very soft player. Foul on Jones was his second. Called it on Tony Jones. Here's the steal. Mitchell. Where have you been? Todd Mitchell with a little slam jam bam. We're tied at 26 with 8.07 to go first half. And that wakes up the crowd. They got a little bit quiet there for a while. Bill Jones goes all the way underneath. Offensive foul on Bill Jones. Not good basketball offensively by Iowa. Just over dribbling the ball, little too much penetration by Jones, and we see the T.O. turnover, and in comes Armstrong. Here comes Mr. Mitchell. He's a runaway freight train. Freddie Akers ought to get this guy to play tight end on a Purdue That's football right. team. Look at those long arms by Stevens. Goes right in his face. Now he goes back in the zone. 3 2 zone. Oh. Put him in for three, the rebound to right. Lee and Lewis like that three-pointer. This is Lorenzen. They got good Gamble. balance now. They got excellent spacing offensively. You want to be about 15 to 17 feet apart from one another so the defense can't give a lot of help. Lowe with a good fake, then leans into one. Didn't get the foul that he was looking for. Loose ball, out of bounds. 
The officials looking at each other for help, and they get it, and the ball is out to Iowa. Joe Bogle was looking for help from his teammate. They're working together as a group. The one thing in the Big Ten, they work as a team. Three guys work continually together. Tonight, we have a little different situation here. Phil Bogle was added to this game because Tim Higgins had another assignment, and he normally works with these two, but he was working in the Big East. McCants back in the ball game at center, and Purdue has done the job on turnovers, converting them into 11 points. Here's a bad pass. He didn't go to try to make a spectacular play. I thought he was going to try for something spectacular. 28-26, Boilermakers by a pair. In case you joined us late, the Associated Press made Iowa its number one team after UPI and USA Today had voted North Carolina number one and Iowa number two. They deserve to be number one since they're undefeated and met every challenge. They're not the best team in the nation. The best team in the nation is in Chapel Hill, the North Carolina Tar Heels. You said that, Mike. If there are any letters from Iowa fans, not me. <laughs> if they win this one, they ought to be number one. The foul will go against Lorenzen. Lorenzen's such a horse inside. He's like a Clydesdale. Number 44. They used to call him Vanilla Gorilla. He was an absolute tough. He looks like he could belong to the Iowa wrestling team of Dan Gable, one of the great stories in America with all the national championships they have won. You're right, though. If they win here today, they deserve to be number one. Just turn tough. around and play Indiana, too. Oh, that's easy. The Lu they don't think they have any coaching down in Indiana, do they? <laughs> I don't think they got any coaching on the sideline. No, don't get me involved in this. Dr. Oh, Tom Davis yeah. should have the advantage against the general, don't you think, in terms of strategy, intensity? Oh, you tell me. <laughs> Todd Mitchell. He's one of my favorite people, the general, Bob Knight. I don't care what anybody says. I love his intensity and his discipline. I'm right with you there. Purdue has run off seven straight points. This kid has the ability to be a star. I don't believe he really knows he can be a star. He's got all the physical attributes. He's strong, he's quick, he's got range of the shooter. As we take a look at Roy Marble with the ice pack on the eye. Iowa scored the last time almost three minutes ago. And the foul is gonna be on Tony Jones as he broke up the long pass. What a crowd voicing their displeasure at every call, as is Gene Cady. You know how much these people wanted to be here tonight, Dick? More than 14,000. There's a foot of snow out there, and it's, it's cold. It's like unbelievable for us to just get from the hotel to get here because of all the snow and ice outside. The interstate has been closed. Another major road has been closed. In and out on the free throw, and Jones with a rebound. He's a good athlete, a great track star in high school. They think eventually he can be a point guard and run the point back and up Stevens. Heck of a football play. Jones, nice feet. Almost went in, even though he lost control of it. Here's Armstrong with the ball, and we've got a foul against Iowa. That's a good call by Jody Sylvester. There's no doubt about that foul. Not a heady play by Melvin McCann. I'm sorry, it was against Purdue. You're right. Two on McCants. McCants is trying to lock number 35. He's trying to get great position with his hips and his body. That's where he wants the ball. Oh, I thought he might have got hit on a wrist right there. He sure did. It looks like he got beat up on a wrist. Now he gets frustrated, and here comes the body block. He was just returning the favor. You know, that an intelligent play, and Melvin McCants is a very intelligent kid. Now with his choices to Notre Dame, Michigan, and Purdue, but he also visited Hawaii. Not bad. Not bad. He's on your all-bright team, right? Oh, he's intelligent, I'll tell you. Tom Davis talking to the uh, scorer. He has a lot of poise and seems to be in control at all times on a sideline. He and Gene getting together with the officials over a shot clock, I believe, or somebody in the crowd maybe bothering the shooters. I think he is. he's pointing behind the, uh, the basket as a light had come on of some kind. I'll tell you not to flash cameras. Good luck. It's an 
inevitable. You know, you talk about a wild place. Where do we go up to the Carrier Dome on Wednesday in Syracuse? I love it up there. Those fans really get into it. And they're coming back after that tough loss, but they're still number one in the Big East. And they got some outstanding players, Jimmy Beheim, Syracuse Orange. Now, you know they're going to just go wilder and wilder and wilder. Just set them up there. Armstrong hits it. Little Aloha on a baseline, seven feet. Now there's a trap. Now you want to reverse it or hit the ball into the middle. There's the reverse man, and there's the diagonal pass. Good pass ahead to Lewis. Partially blocked by Gary Wright. DJ Armstrong puts pressure on the defense with the way he runs the ball up the court. Lost out of bounds. That's the Purdue. A lot of intensity on the floor, Mike. Gamble just couldn't hold that one. 30-28. Boilermakers by a pair. Watch the help defense right now by Stevens. Stevens is going to come out. He's going to put pressure on the ball. He's got the long arms. He knocks it right off his feet. He's got those long, long arms that make him play about 6'6 instead of 6'3. Iowa has turned the ball over 13 times in the first half. They only average 14 turnovers a game. They're in a zone right now. Play in an area of the floor. Wide open baseline jump shot against the zone. You count that if you let him shoot that open, Jay. Lewis can do that all night long, and he'll never touch the rim. 32-28, Purdue. Mike, they've done a good job containing him also. We saw him in a 39-point explosion against Michigan. Bad pass by Wright as Lowhouse couldn't reach it. Purdue does a good job defensively. I've always talked about Purdue. They use four basic principles. Pressure on the ball, deny the ball, beat the cutter to the ball, and block out. Everett Stevens just ignores the pressure. There's the zone. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two right now. Eventually, Jones will drop number 14 down when the ball goes to the side. They're splitting them up on top. Two against one. That's one of the basic concepts in attacking the zone with a point man. Two against one. They call it even against odd. Split them and have the open jump shot. Mitchell has eight, and it's a six-point lead. pressure I was talking about as one of their principles. Apply pressure on the ball. Credit it to this guy on the sideline, Gene Cady, waiting for that one moment to get to a final four so he could finally be recognized nationally as truly one of the great coaches in the nation. 15 turnovers against the number one ranked Hawkeye. See, now watch. They'll try to split the top guy. Two against one. Make, see now, they're going to go two against one right here. Stevens is going to play a little two-man game with Mitchell. There it is. Arnold kept it alive. Good job, but there was nobody there, and it goes out of bounds. I wish I had that telestrator right now. I would show those people out there what they were doing. Look at Iowa. Hasn't scored since 9-10 in the first half. Almost five minutes with my math, and I'm not good in math at all. Well, four and a half, but it's close enough. Approximately five. Nice feed to Campbell. That broke the string, and Mitchell picks up the foul. They got that score, Mike, because they cleared out the weak side and took away any kind of help defense and got the ball at Gamble. You watch right now. See, all the defensive players are Purdue to the strong side of the ball. They get it to the weak side. There's no help to that side, and Gamble gets himself an easy deuce. Gamble with eight points. Averages 10.3 and has the three-point play. 34-31. There's the full court pressure. He could run that sideline. And he asked for a timeout. Mitchell was running out of time. I think he also forgot that he could run the sideline. So many times kids panic when they're on that baseline. You can run it after a score. Here's pressure on a basketball, and here's the second factor in their defense. They deny and play the passing lane. Ball you man by Stevens. He steps right into the passing lane, denies, and now gets himself the easy deuce as he slides right by B.J. Armstrong. We said at the beginning of the game, Dick, point guards would really make a difference, and Stevens has done a great job tonight. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders will have all the top 20 scores and the highlights from the studio, and our professor, Dick Vitale, speaks out on uh, first semester grades. The report card has arrived. I used to hate that day. <laughs> I don't talk about nuclear physics either. I talk a little hoopology. All right. Be with us at halftime to pick that one up. 428 left. First See, that's half a play. That's the game plan in attacking that pressure. Lewis shoots Whoa. the jumper. He's not really a good jump shooter dribbling, trying to create his shot. He has to be in a rhythm of an offensive set. 
Right then, he was not a good jump shooter from six feet. Offensive oh, foul. Good foul. ball. That's a new point of emphasis this year. If the offensive player leans into the defensive player, we'll watch it right here. The ball goes down to the post. He posts up inside. There's Gamble. Wheels inside. Lee's got position. He takes it to him with his right shoulder and Phil Bover with an excellent call. That's the second charge Lee has drawn after picking up two early personal fouls in the half. Three-point game for Purdue with the lead and the basketball. Man-to-man -man defense now by Iowa. They come out of the zone. Purdue's going to try and get some ball movement and player movement. Lee for three. They kick it outside. Loose ball on the floor. It's Iowa. Good job by Jones. Yeah, he didn't get up off his feet. If he got up with the ball from the floor, it's an automatic walk-in violation as you're changing your pivot foot. Stevens working on Jones over there. Oh, a little walk it's right walk. there. Yes, he took a little shuffle. Jimmy Burr right on the call. Gamble has managed to turn it over a couple of times in a hurry. He's really getting great post position inside, but he can't finalize on the play. That is the 17th turnover for Iowa. They normally only turn the ball over 14 times a game, and normally Purdue forces 18, so it's advantage Boilermakers. They're in a 1-4 set, basically. No, actually, it's not a 1-4. Loose ball knocked out of bounds. Boy, Mo is intense, isn't he? Oh, he Steven? is. He's, he's really, talking to him. He's really reminiscent of a guy like John Havlicek. I mean, he's not a Havlicek athlete and player, but he plays so hard as Armstrong comes on the floor. He's got a Brother Rice High School. They got two seven four players there, twins, the Lanier twins, in near where I used to live, Birmingham, Michigan. I used to live in West Bloomfield, Michigan, and love my stay in the Detroit area. It's a three-point ball game. Boilermakers with the lead. Good feed to Lewis. Shot won't go. What a rebound of Horton. Horton really went up with great hands. Mo found it. It was a two-pointer. It reminds me a little bit of Jerry Seastein, who's now playing with the Boston yep. Celtics. A one-point game with 2.48 to play in West Lafayette in the first half. Half-court trap is trying to invite him in a trap. Great pass. That's the exclamation point. And Mitchell turns and looks at his face and says, in your face. This is the diagonal pass. Watch this pass by Stevens. He throws the diagonal pass. Mitchell with the great catch, and now he takes it right up at Hort. I mean, and he looks at him. Watch him turn. In your face. A superb side. Second foul on Horton, and Mitchell is in with 10 first half points. Well, if you like college basketball, it's the place to be tonight, isn't it? Do you think I like college oh, basketball? Oh, yeah. <laughs> About as much as I do. Oh, Mike, you're great to work with. It's a lot of fun, Dick, and especially when you get a game like this. Especially getting paid for doing this. Are you kidding well, me? Well, we get paid? I mean, they have no money left for me after they negotiated <laughs> your contract. Lewis gets a breather, and Mitchell tries to complete the three-point play. He's an explosive player. He's got such potential. I really think he's Mr. Poe. He can be a great star. You he said is. they had to get some points out of him tonight to have a chance. There he is trying to play Lowhouse down in the post, number 33. Mo had to get it back outside as they cut him off. This is a great matchup right here. Stevens and Armstrong. Oh, look at Mo. Oh. Gee whiz. He's swinging those elbows. He sure is. That basketball can be a weapon when you do that, and the crowd didn't like it at all, and neither did Gene Cady. Well, that could be a violation. I mean, you swing your elbows excessively. If you don't make contact, see, oh, that. yeah, that is definitely a violation. Oh, he can hurt somebody. He makes contact like that. You bet. And now the official talking to them, talking to Mo, and talking to Stevens. It's also, you know, you try to get an offensive advantage in terms of positioning, but that is clearly, as far as I'm concerned, that's clearly using your elbows excessively. You don't have to make contact. In college basketball, if you use them in that fashion, it's a violation. Horton hits the free throw. He'll get another. 37-34. It might be a little intimidating. He's standing in front of that. I'm watching this Big Ten action, and I'm only thinking about, like, next year, life's going to get even tougher and tougher with the addition of the Marcus Liberties and the Terry Mills and the Romeo Robinsons, the Nick Andersons, the Lyndon Jones, the Jay Edwards. What a league they got going. Good pass to Tony Jones in the lane. 
Oh, if he gives him productivity, that's all they're searching for. One more player off the bench, and Mr. Jones could be the answer. Nice fake by Armstrong, but he can't get the bucket. Marble, excuse me, Gamble. It looks like they're going to have to go without Roy Marble anyway for the entire first half. I don't know if we'll see him in the second half. That certainly hurts their productivity along the baseline. If you joined us late, Marble was hit in the eye by a pass from one of his own teammates. Has not been back in since. Partially rejected. Good job by Lowhouse from behind. Ahead to Mo for two. Oh, is he tough? You can see why he's my best sixth man in America, number 20. He's so tough. What a clutch performer off that bench. Three-point ball game with 1.22 to go. Mo is in with eight. Lorenzen will come in. Also back in, Bill Jones. As Tom Davis shuffles his uh, troops. He rotates players. He did that when he was at Boston College. He had so much success. Here's Jones gets a nice hand as he goes out. The freshman out of Fort Wayne. See, they don't stop. They keep coming at you with that full court trap. And there's the steal. Bad pass. And Lewis picked it off. Had it blocked. Stevens rejected it. Now it's loose. And Turner gets it. Stevens is a guard, and he's already blocked in this half three shots. That's amazing. When he gets that comfort zone playing the point guard position, he told me yesterday, he said, I'm not making good decisions and passing the ball in transition, and I have to work on that. And it's great to hear a kid admit, admit that he has an area that he has to improve on. Bodies and big bodies flying everywhere. They allow him to play in this league. A little bit of mugging each other inside. Mo wants to go back door. They can't get it to him. Looking for five seconds on Jones. And he'll score the bucket. And Gene Cady is beside himself. He created that opportunity. He wanted to walk in violation. He did not lift his pivot foot. 39-38. What a way to make a living on that sideline. Those guys absolutely earned the bucks. I know it's mega bucks for some. But believe me, there are a lot of guys out there that don't make mega bucks. Purdue playing for the last shot. You can see the clock on the lower right part of your screen. And this is the guy they want to have it. Lewis. Three-pointer. He got the roll. He gets the roll. And his mama sitting in front of him. Comes up inside. What a way to end a terrific first half. It's really an unbelievable game with the intensity, the emotion. It may be cold and icy outside, but it's sizzling in here, Mr. Patrick. Troy Lewis has 12 points. See, Lewis really works well without the ball. He's not a great creator off the dribble. Now they face up on him, and look at him. He stares right at the defender, and he's got long arms, and he shoots it right off the top. Now there's the great rotation, and the rotation gives him the soft touch and the deuce. Fifth ranked Purdue at halftime, 42. Number one, Iowa, 38. We'll be back for the second half. A great action from West Lafayette right now. Let's go to the studio and John Saunders. The jumper by Tony Kimbrough yesterday. One for 20 is a heck of a stat. They work on that. That's not by any accident. Jumper by Horton to start the second half. The follow shot goes, though, and it's a one-point ball game. Excuse me, two at 42-40. Right out of the locker room, they start with their full-court trapping pressure with the guy on the baseline. Oh, Great nice pass. pass inside. Great bounce pass. Perfect angle on the entry. I mean, that was a clinic 101 on how to drop the bounce pass to the post. McCants has four. This is Mo. And the crowd really uh, lights up every time he touches the ball. McCants had back spasms, been hurting recently. He said he feels better today. They take it right at him. Knocked out of bounds. It's out to Purdue as Horton couldn't hold it. Tom Davis certainly frustrated with their play offensively. And they call traveling on Lee at the baseline. Now, why is that a travel that's, and it wasn't before? That's a walking violation because there wasn't a score, Mike. He has to remain stationary on the entry. On a score, he can run the baseline. On a violation, he cannot. Stevens knocked away the inbound pass, but Lowhouse gets it back. Oh, look at this. The trap. They popped the loose ball. Are they letting him play or what? See, they got to get better spacing offensively. Mo for three. <laughs> Nice rebound of Horton. 
Good rebound by McCann. McCann's got big, soft hands. Stevens, offensive foul. That's what he was talking to me about earlier, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the telecast. Not using great judgment in transition has been one of his problems. Stevens right now should drive the bounce pass and pull up at the foul line. He gets a little showtime. Good call by Jimmy Barr. He runs him down. Not a good decision in judgment by Stevens in transition. Second foul on Stevens. And Armstrong can't get the bounce pass inside to Horton. Purdue's half-court defense is really forcing Iowa into a lot of turnovers. Now for Iowa, Dick, who's going to pick up the scoring slack for Roy Marble? It's got to be Mo with his range as a shooter. He's got to give him some wing jump shooting. He's also a good three-point shooter. Stevens says he wants to run the offense. Get it to Troy Lewis. Lee, good perimeter shooter. Leaned into that one. He's been quiet today. Had the great game yesterday against Louisville when he was explosive for a career high of 23. Low house, the seven-footer with a three-pointer. Saved by Horton. Great job. And off of Purdue. Here comes Gary Wright into the ball game. Doesn't get any easier, as you mentioned earlier. Iowa's got Indiana on Thursday, and Purdue has got Illinois. And you talk about Illinois, they got a great player, Kenny Norman. It's about time America realizes he's one of the truly great players in college basketball. Here's the steal, and it's Stevens again. Takes it in himself. Well, he used good judgment right there because the defensive player in a tandem defensively shut off his passing lane, and he went in under control. Jones, baseline drive, offensive foul, Bill Jones. If you chart their offensive efficiency, Mike, the last three possessions, they've come down. They haven't gotten a good shot. You only had that one three-point attempt by Lojas, and there's the charge. He definitely leans the shoulder right in. Phil Bova got a nice haircut. He goes to my hairstylist. <laughs> Purdue is up by six with 17.50 to go in the game. There's the post of Lewis. Place. Lowhouse blocked the shot, but they call him for the foul. I see a spurt coming on by Purdue right now. I see one of those 8-1 spurts, 9-1 spurts to get themselves a comfortable lead. I see right now where it seems to me that Iowa is playing on its heels. Well, the crowd is really on Mo. They take him out of the ball game, and he gets a send-off. He's from uh, Indianapolis, so he's right down the road, and he's not a favorite here because he's made his feelings very, very clear how much he really was disappointed that he wasn't recruited by the Washington State. Lewis goes to the line, and when he does, you can put it in the book. That's Michael Reeves, number 11, who's into the ball game for the first time, 6'3", junior. He's had a knee problem. Reeves was counted on to be the starter. He got hurt early during the pre-season uh, workouts, and eventually couldn't play and the job was won by bj armstrong and there's no way he's taking the job from bj now he's become a solid goal performer at that point guard slot lewis perfect from the line tonight five out of five and purdue just builds that lead lewis with 14 points on the night they're really digging in defensively playing head to head and i was not getting enough ball movement jones and reeves the backcourt for tom davis they're zoning right now. They went into a 2-3 zone like a matchup. Playing a man in the area of the floor. Look at McCants. He's playing the lane. He'll guard anybody in that three-second area. Right back to Reeves. Shot clock is down to 13 seconds. Right, left all alone to Jones. And it's a traveling violation because two Iowa players were fighting over it. Iowa looks a little rattled now in their half-court offense. They have to find really some rhythm and timing. I look for some substitutions to get some players back on the floor like Armstrong, and he sends them in immediately, makes me look like a genius. You have to think about this, Dick. Iowa is down by only eight points five times this year. They've been down by 12 or more, and they're still undefeated. Try 22 against Illinois. 61-39. You heard me correctly. At, at Illinois. Illinois. Lowhouse with a rebound. Off the missed shot by McCants. McCants showed some aggressive play there, taking it to the basket. Lowhouse from 17. Kept alive by Bill Jones. Nice job. He gives him an extra rebounder from the guard slot at 6-7. Armstrong calls out the play. You want to drive the ball into the lane now and get the baseline jump shot against this kind of defense. 
They're playing like a matchup zone, communicating, playing a man in the area of the floor. It's very difficult to teach the matchup. You've got to release cutters when guys go through. Got a foul and a bucket. A nice job by Campbell. That's a big basket for Iowa. They got to love the play by Kevin Gamble. Excellent play. Certainly, Katie disappointed with his defense not stepping in to stop his drive. They don't get enough help as he takes the ball in the lane. McCants doesn't step out. Here, Lee's a little slow rotating over to give help. Doug Lee did not rotate over quick and quickly enough. Foul was on Todd Mitchell. And Gamble will go to the line. Trying for a three-point play. He cut the lead to five. Gamble and Horton played on a state championship team in Springfield, Illinois. Lanphier High School when he was a senior and Horton was a sophomore. Gamble's got the loose ball. Got the roll. Great plays by Gamble. Two big baskets when they're really struggling. Iowa's big advantage is on the boards. They have dominated that category, but they've also turned it over a lot. Whoa. No one rotates over and gives any kind of help defensively. He has a driving lane for an easy layup. Lewis leads everybody in scoring with 16, and Jones answers quickly at the other end. Now here comes Lojas with the trap. That is the reverse pass. They can't make the pass. Oh, he gets it back, luckily. It's a three on two for Purdue, and Mitchell will wait for help. See, then they rotate into a man-to-man -man after they come out of the 1-2-1-1 one, one, one trap. Stevens has just done a great job at the point for the Boilermakers. And now he'll shoot it. He's passed the ball. He's defended against the ball. He shot the perimeter jump shot. He's taken it in transition. He hasn't sold any popcorn. <laughs> Give him a box. 52-46, the margin, a half dozen for the Boilermakers. The crowd has loved it all night long. Notice the way they point and they communicate when cutters go through. Tough pass inside, taken away and gotten back by Horton. And Horton will get the foul on this play. Oh, he, oh, oh, they count the basket. I thought it was a good call. I really do. I think you had to count the basket. Now, you watch right here. Eddie Horton is going to get the ball down in the post area. He spins to the lane. Now, the ball is loose. He gets it back. He spins. He gets yeah. fouled. They call the block. you got to count it. The ball definitely was released. I'll give you that one. You don't give me too many. You're tough on no. me, Mike. <laughs> you will make sure you earn them. You're a tough official. They'll put the zebra shirt on you. No, thank you. I'm going to call Fred Barrick out of the ACC, no, no. Bob Wartman of the Big Ten, and tell him to hire you. Horton hits the free throw. Another three-point play. Horton's gotten seven points in a hurry, and it's gotten Iowa back in the ballgame. Purdue 52, Iowa 49. Watch Doug Lee now, going to take the ball in against the pressure of Lohaus. He makes the entry to Stevens, freeze that right there. Now watch, Stevens has the basketball, Lohaus comes with the trap. There's the ball reversal, they bounce the ball back to Lee, who's one step behind the trap. Now they reverse it back to Stevens, and he's going to look for the diagonal to Lewis, and no one rotates over, and Lewis goes in for the unmolested little layup. What a clinic in attacking the pressure by Mr. Cady. Well, let's see if they can do it again as Lee will take it out of bounds. We have a score to pass on to you. DePaul has beaten Indiana State 61 to 49 to remain unbeaten. Notice how they use Lee all the time as the reverse man against the trap. The defensive player has to make a decision. Do I rotate up and shut that pass off? If he does, the middle of the floor is open. Tony Jones is in there, number 25, to run the offense. Now notice how Iowa played two men on top against the one man when the ball comes back out to the perimeter. Jones with a bad pass, and here comes Mo for the Hawkeyes. Had it knocked away, picked up by Horton, and Horton will draw the foul on Doug Lee. The two kids from Lamphere High School in Springfield are really keeping Iowa right banging on the door against Purdue. Gamble and also Horton are doing an excellent job. There's Mo now pushing the ball up the floor, tough as nails, sees the seam, drives it in. And there's the drive by Horton. I thought it was a good call because the feet were not planted defensively. You must initially face the, def the offensive player. Both feet must be planted. And then you move and you beat that offensive player. It's a charge. And Horton, even though he missed that free throw, has taken over the Iowa offense here in the second half. Hasn't done a good job on the free throw line, though. No, he hasn't. For the season, shooting 59%. It's that one. See, notice right here, Iowa's going to give him the back pass. 
50, 250, they get it ahead to Lewis. Lewis and Tony Jones. And that's one of several times they've not been able to convert an advantage like that. Yeah, that hurts when you don't come up with a conversion. Jones at the other end, that's Bill Jones, and we're tied at 52. This is happening without Everett Stevens in there. Bill Jones giving him some quality play off the bench for Iowa. Another outstanding player who started a great deal last year. There's the zone. Now don't try to split the top guy two against one. Lee right now and Jones will try to work against Jones at top. You try to go with the cool even against odd. Lewis loves to see his zone. In and out on that one. And Moe with a rebound. Iowa's come out with a spurt here. I thought Purdue looked like they were going to get a spurt, and Iowa really can answer them back. What a goody team. I mean, they really play well together. Jones with a jump hook, and Iowa regains the lead. It's unbelievable when you can bring kids off the bench like Jones and Moe and Wright and Lorenzen. Purdue wants a timeout to talk about it with 13.28 to go. It's Iowa over the Boilermakers by two. Uh, there's Zanies also, and I love that atmosphere, and I also love it down at Chapel Hill and Duke, down in Durham, they go bananas, and Tom has a, he was telling me today at lunch, he said, I can't believe the fan support up in Iowa City, it's fantastic. In the 16 and 0, you get a lot of support. They even support them when they don't win, though. they right. really do. That's true. 54-52, Iowa by a pair, here comes the pressure and they're, they beat it they're a different team when stevens is on the floor they bring them back during the timeout everett stevens is back on the floor see if they stay in the zone and they do one of the important parts of a club having that point guard you really need that guy to run your offenses play the good defense this is mitchell and stevens lee wants the ball good three-point shooter he'll drive this time though <laughs> Bounds to Purdue. They got a lucky break there. I thought they could have had a foul on Mitchell crashing over the back. He really came in there hard. You look at a lot of teams that lack a point guard. Take Louisville, for example. You take Pittsburgh with four great athletes. This three. Six points for Doug Lee, who had 23 yesterday against Louisville. Oh, nice inside outside action. Nice inside-outside action as we look at Roy Marble. That's the second three-pointer against Purdue in the last four games. Teams were one for 20 up until that three-pointer by Moe. Stevens hit by Moe from behind. Fans wanted a foul, didn't get it. And Gene Cady is up pleading his case. They're going to reverse the ball to Lee. They're going to try to reverse the ball to Lee. That ball was touched, saved by Stevens. Is Kevin Stallings, a former player and an assistant to Gene Cady, sends him a vice Tom Davis. Davis has to love the effort, the effort of Mr. Moe. I mean, he isn't afraid of this crowd. He reminds me a little bit of Scott Skiles. Doesn't have Skiles' yes, does. ability, but Skiles would look at the crowd, point at the scoreboard, and say, baby, in your face, because I'm tough as nails. It's only the third team foul against Iowa. Purdue has committed four here in the second half. It's a two-point ball game. Iowa has been number one for what, about three hours right now? They're trying to stay that way. They want to stay that way. AP poll came out around uh, 7 o'clock tonight. Oh. McCants missed the shot. And McCants commits the personal after that. Inevitably, that happens usually with the big people. They miss the easy conversion inside, and then they climb over the back. Third foul on McCants, fifth team foul against Purdue, second half. You go into the bonus at seven. Well, oh, what a ball game. 11.48 left. It's a two-point contest. <laughs> Blocking foul. And they call it on Doug Lee. That is number four on Doug Lee. There's the pass right over the top of the defense. They really try to isolate this to gamble. I don't know. He looked like Lee maybe he hooked. almost hooked him. Yeah. yeah. Hooked him offensively. He sure did. Yes. Doug Lee on the sideline. Number 20. Four fouls. And that's big. Mo leans into one. He won't go. McCants with a rebound. It's time for Lewis, I think, to get a little bit going offensively. Find some shots for Troy Lewis. 
He had a little rest there during the break. They got him back in, and Kip Jones was trying to set a screen for him so Lewis could unload that three-pointer. They'll run him baseline to baseline against the zone. So they try to get that Mitchell. baseline jumper. They really use the baseline against the zone. Either Mitchell or Lewis will have the open jump shot with ball movement. Todd Mitchell has his 13th point. We're tied at 57. Armstrong got away. Missed the shot, and the foul is going to be called on Stevens. Got him on the way by, and we have Stevens with four. Stevens with four is big if our charts are accurate because, as we talked about, and it is his fourth foul, he's the irreplaceable part. Pressure now is going to be on Tony Jones, the freshman, to come in and, and operate against this pressure defensively of Iowa. Remember, Lee is already on the bench with four personal fouls. Now it becomes decision time for Gene Cady. How long do I wait before I play my key players as I don't have the depth? Now here he is. He comes by him. He definitely makes Got contact the hand. on a hand. He definitely makes contact. Armstrong has his seventh point. Mentally a tough kid. B.J. Armstrong was in the lobby the other day. He's got his act together academically, athletically. Comes from a great home. His dad's an executive at IBM. 59-57, Iowa by two. Here's the pressure again, low house. There's the trap. Now it's going to be interesting. The pressure's on this kid to handle it. Looks like he handled it there. Lewis goes all the way. Missed the shot. Holy cow, that's about the fourth layup for Dewey's miss. Usually that happens if you're on the road where you don't have familiarity with the glass and with the backboards. But in your own home arena, McCants and now Lewis have come up short on easy layups inside. Foul was on Horton. It's his third. Fourth team foul against Iowa. Iowa staying in the zone. They got to attack the baseline against this zone. Against this 3-2 set, 1-2-2 set, some call it. 35 gambles, sinks inside when the ball goes to the post. Watch 35 now. See, he puts pressure up top. Now slide down inside. Jones trying to penetrate to Lewis. Back to Jones. Kicked by Armstrong. They'll recycle a 45-second clock. Jones is improving at that position, Mike, but he just doesn't look like he's comfortable out there. He's normally a second guard trying to make the conversion to a point guard. That's almost as tough as a back-to-the-basket player trying to become a facing player at the forward position. They do not have a lot of firepower out there right now. They got to find Lee out of the game. They got to find Lewis or Mitchell along the baseline. There's Mitchell, covered in a hurry. Now he's going to run the baseline to overload against the zone. There it is on the baseline. Air ball by Mitchell. They did everything right to make the shot. 9.57 and counting. Gamble. What a pretty move. Gamble's really been effective here in the second half. Iowa was on the ropes. He made two clutch plays. And it comes up with another big one right here. Jones bounces it off. Jones. And it's out of bounds. The that biggest Kip Jones off of Bill Jones. The biggest thing, Mike, is that they've really taken out this crowd. One of the most explosive six-man advantages in America right here at Mackey Arena. It's been quiet because they're scared right now. They know Iowa is for real. Gary Wright, number three, back in the ball game for the Hawkeyes. Jones doing a good job against the pressure. Gets it to Lewis. Wright's one of the best men in America playing on a baseline in the pressure defense. In fact, Tom Davis talks about him in a class. Ready for this one? Keith Erickson, a former superstar at UCLA and volleyball player back in the mid-60s. Lewis for three. Can't hit it. Right had the rebound out to Armstrong. He pushes it up. Oh, what a nice play. Great pass. Ball tips out of bounds. And it's out to Purdue. Good pass, except the offensive player caught himself in a very poor position being behind the backboard. And the boo is for Mo as he, he loves her. I get a kick. I get a feeling he loves it. He I'll wants he more booze. These kids believe in Tom Davis. I think a great win for him was beating North Carolina State early to give the kids confidence and belief in his system. Go up to Lewis. They've handled the pressure very, very well tonight. Though. Yeah, they're getting the ball up, getting the shots they want. They're just not putting them down, like right here. Kip Jones with a follow. He missed. Another tip won't go. There's a lid on it for Purdue right now. Coming up short on all the easy shots on the inside. Reeves, ball knocked out of bounds. Good play by Lewis as he cut in front of Mo. 
more and more you watch Iowa, the more you have to be convinced they're certainly a top five team in America. I don't know about one, two, or three, but they got a great chance for heading for Bourbon Street in New Orleans. For quality depth, I don't know how you could match them in North Carolina. Remember, we're seeing them without Roy Marble also. That's right. He joined us late. Marble was hit in the first half by either the basketball or his own hand and scratched the pupil of his right eye. And the one thing, if they were to win here tonight, Gene Cady doesn't want any alibi or excuse about last night's, la yesterday afternoon's game against Louisville for fatigue. He said, we're in good condition. Right, trying to make a move. Shot clock's in eight seconds. Reeves will bring it back. Shot clock at five. Goes baseline all the way underneath. Throw out with Trayer. That counts. It doesn't have to hit the rim. It just has to be a shot. Reeves hasn't had enough PT playing time in key situations right now. This is a whole unique situation for him. He's had knee, knee surgery, and now he's getting some playing time. I mean, Gene Cady's got an exercise in futility right now. He's up yelling at his team. He's doing a little Jane Fonda act on the sideline, running up and down. Tony Jones working in the backcourt with Lewis. Everett Stevens on the bench with four personal fouls. Doug Lee on the bench with four personal See, fouls. McCants has got to get a little active inside. They can't just rely on that post play. I mean, that perimeter jump shot. They got to try and get some inside play. Mitchell. Tipped in by Kip Jones. They finally come up with an offensive rebound for a score. They got to get some inside score. They've just been relying strictly on a perimeter game. Three points for Kip Jones. 61 59. Iowa by two. Keith. the shot and the foul will be on Lohaus. Gene Cady's trying to buy some time right now before making the decision to come in with Mr. Stevens. 7-18 left to go. A two-point game from Purdue. Here, let's take a look at the foul trouble because it's really impacted on Purdue. Stevens and Lee are on the bench with four. Yeah, he has to make a decision soon as to when to bring Stevens and Lee in. I think he's trying to get to the five-minute mark. We look at foul trouble, but we also must think about Roy Marble. Roy Marble's been out of action here the entire second half, so they've lost a quality player already, Iowa, in this game. As we look at Roy Marble there with the eye injury, which has sidelined him, He's really cheering his teammates on, averaging 15 points a game. But bigger than that, three tournaments MVP. Yeah. There's Stevens on the bench. I think he's waiting for about the five-minute mark to make the decision. As Lee's come on the floor, he's going to play one guy with four fouls, keep one out, and he's keeping Stevens out. But he's not going to be able to wait long because Stevens is going to have to be on the floor to face the defense that Iowa puts out, that full court pressure. Needs Stevens to run the offense. He needs some points from Lee. Set, set, set. They break the press again to Lewis. Lewis gives it to Tony Jones, the freshman, who's done a good job tonight. There's an opening in a seam at that three-second area that they got to drive the ball into McCants. They're not even looking to get it to the big horse down in the boxes. He's an opening in that seam. See, they're playing strictly perimeter. Lewis for three, and Purdue has regained the lead. Nothing like having the three-point shooter on your side. Lewis hits the three-pointer. Troy Lewis has 19 tonight. Gamble. That's been a money series for them, Mike. They clear out the entire side so you can't give any help defensively. Oh, there's a bump. There's a bump in violation. Got to call the foul, rather. Hasn't called anything oh, yet. Slow call. Oh. oh, that's a poor call. Absolutely a poor call. No reason with three officials staring at this. You take a look at this pass inbounds here. Crucial segment in the game. He gets knocked to the deck. Very slow making the call. No foul, just a turnover, and Iowa with a one-point lead has the basketball. This is Horton. They played well offensively in the second half. Purdue zoning now in a 2-3 zone, trying to protect Lee in the zone to protect the defensive player. Number 20's got four. Lorenz. Dangerous pass. Off-balance jumper by Horton. And the ball's out of bounds to Iowa. Horton was falling down. Yeah, that was really nothing more than a prayer right there. Gene Cady's got a lot of decisions facing him right now. Everett Stevens, when do I get him in? 
next offensive possession, I would get him on the floor. Well, we're down to five minutes and 53 seconds and counting. Mo. Armstrong had a three-point shot and passed on it. He's got to get Mitchell. Bounce. He's got to get Mitchell inside, too, to give him some strength inside defensively. Can't allow Iowa to get that big gap on him. Horton has 11, and it's a four-point Iowa lead. He's got both guys ready to come in. Lewis tries the three-pointer. McCants got it back to him. Tony Jones for two. McCants kept it alive again, but the rebound went to Al Lorenzen. Armstrong knocked away. It's a two-on-one. He'll take it all the way in. It's a blocking foul. On Armstrong. Might have got away with one. Might have got away with one in terms of a walking violation, Mike. I don't know your feelings. I thought he definitely... You take a look right now. Here comes Lewis in transition. Does he take the extra step? One, two. You're allowed two steps. No, that there looked good. Looked good. Looked like the official was right on the money. Yeah, looks like the official was right on the money. He's got the block sliding in, not stationary. But I thought maybe a walk. You're allowed two steps on the drive to the goal. That's a pair on Armstrong. And Lewis goes to the free throw line where he is perfect. Five out of five and has 19 points. Purdue, Purdue brings Stevens and Mitchell in. I thought he'd bring him in with the next possession. And he's had to get Steve, uh, Mitchell on the floor to give him strength on that baseline. Lewis also has five rebounds tonight, and that's the best on the team, and he misses his first free throw. There's Everett Stevens right now with four fouls. He's got to forget about the four and play with the same kind of intensity that he plays normally. Tony Jones is going to come back in in a second, and it looks like he's going to come in for Troy Lewis, the shooter. Makes the second. 65-63, Iowa by two with 5.13 left. He might be playing offense and defense right now. Jones, a quicker kid with better athletic skills on the defense for pressure, and Lewis, the better offensive player. Here's the press. They beat the 10-second count. D.J. Armstrong's a leader. He pushes the ball up the floor, has great vision on the floor, makes the excellent bounce pass. Horton, maybe a little out of his range, misses the jumper. Yeah, Purdue Horton. with a chance to tie. Horton's an inside player. Oh, score the basket. Goal tending on Gamble. They got to go into the big horse. That's what I was talking about earlier, Mike. He's getting post position inside, and they don't look for him. This time, Lee looks for the big horse. He whirls to the lane, and there's the goal tending by Gamble. He caught the ball on his downward flight. 65-65 with 448, and they're going crazy at Mackey Arena. Oh, look at the steal. Mitchell out to Lee. He says, here, take it. And Stevens will set it up. Jones is on the court for defensive ability, and he comes up with a big steal. Everybody on their feet. The entire Purdue team standing. Now they tell him to sit down. McCants wants the ball, and they don't look to the big guy. Now, he wants the ball in the post, but Lee's going to shoot the jumper. Had a three-pointer, put up an air ball right into the hands of Lohau. What excitement, Mike. What excitement. This is something. Oh, wow. Mo swinging that ball again. Gamble. Nice, soft touch. What a tough inside player. He's a big guard. He has great post-up ability and strength. Mitchell beats the press, a two-point Iowa lead, three minutes, 52 seconds, and counting. Gamble at 6-7 at the point. Look at the pointing, talking to the official. They're really into the game, all 10 players. You talk about concentration. See, so they're trying to run the baseline to get the baseline jumper. Stevens, a three-point attempt, it won't go. Here comes Armstrong, oh, three on one. Oh, what a great decision. What a great decision in transition. Yeah. They pull a walking violation, though. They called traveling and no basket. But he made a tremendous decision. Three on one. Used the bounce pass. Look at B.J. Armstrong. What a leader. He looks left. He kicks it right. He says deliver it. But no, Gamble takes the extra step. The referee right on the call. Jimmy Barr. Timeout with 3.31 left. Still a two-point game. We don't believe that. Watch Kevin Gamble, number 35, the best night of his career, 19 points so far. Freeze that. Look at him post inside. Post means simply play with your back to the basket, spin in the lane. I would like
Did you see that frozen up there to show the people? We use that term post all this time. Posted up simply means you play with your back to the basket. Three areas you can post. You can post offensively on the low box inside. You can post at the middle of the lane, and you can post up high. Two points, Iowa on a plus side, 331. Do they stay number one? If they win this, they certainly do. Gamble is having a career night. 19 points, 9 out of 10 from the floor, 7 rebounds. Horton also has 7 rebounds. They've really made a difference with Marble out with the iron. Especially Marble's a baseline player, and Gamble and Horton. Can you imagine those two together in high school? Tough. That's why they won a state championship. They're very physical, very aggressive players. It's Iowa 67, Purdue 65, 331 left. Both undefeated in the Big Ten. In a few minutes, one of them will have their first loss. I know many people are going to talk about a fatigue factor. They're going to talk about Louisville playing Iowa yesterday. Tom Davis congratulating his players at all times in terms of effort. I don't really believe that's any factor at all, Mike. When you watch this Purdue team, they've got a very unique conditioning program. Swimming, running, track and field. I didn't think 18-year-old kids were supposed to get tired in the first place. Exactly. Every possession becomes critical now. Now they're going to look for the baseline jumper. Either they're going to go to Lewis or try to get Mitchell down inside. They want to get Mitchell maybe inside. Stevens tries a three-pointer. That's two in a row. He's missed. Mitchell tried to save it, lost it out of bounds. Well, what do you Ever think about that three-point shot? They've taken several. Everett Stevens right now is not using good judgment and shot selection. He really has to get the ball to his primary option, Lewis or Mitchell. Purdue has only hit four out of 13 three-pointers tonight. They're down by two right now. They may need that three-pointer in a minute. Armstrong. Oh, he had the easy jump shot right there, Lohaus. They'll kick it back out and start from scratch with 21 seconds on the shot clock. Armstrong is a leader on the floor. Seems to always be in control of what's happening. Armstrong, way short on the jumper. Stevens saved it, knocked it off the hands of Horton, who had an easy follow shot. Horton's got to be careful of a technical foul. You don't want one right now. You don't want to say the right word. The magical word that gets you the automatic T. 2.35 to go. Purdue with a chance to tie. This is Lewis as they beat the pressure again. And Stevens will run the offense against the zone defense. Again, I believe their options have to be right now. Mitchell, there's the inside-outside action. Or Lewis, ran down on him, tipped outside, picked the whole big collision. And a travel called on Bill Jones. Boy, after a collision like that, that's tough, and Jones is really upset about it. Yeah, yeah they got to be careful. Right now, they're losing a little bit of their poise. There's the inside action. Lewis is going to shoot the baseline jumper. Here comes the long rebound. Lewis with the... There's the long arms by Jones. He whirls. He did take an extra step before the contact. Before the contact. He took I was an extra just going to say, if you get knocked on your back, you do tend to shuffle your feet. <laughs> You're tough on me. I can't win, Mike. You, you're really tough on me. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Mitchell's got to go down inside more also. Lewis. Look at McCants. He's begging for the ball. Lewis for three. Not again. They're playing jump shooting. They're playing horse right now. No inside game at all. And Tom Davis says we've got a minute 44 left and the advantage by two points. And he wants to talk about it. And Gene Cady has got to be a little bit upset with his ball club. They have not been able to hit that three-point shot. And I'm surprised as you are, Dick, when you see McCants having position in there and wanting the ball if they haven't been able to get it to him. He's begging and begging for the ball. He's also wide open in the seam of the zone, and they're not driving it into McCants. Not only can you use him as a scorer, Mike, but if you drive it into the post player, you have excellent inside-outside action. Right now, Purdue is becoming too stationary offense, offensively. This should be a good one. Georgia Tech against North Carolina. That's on Saturday night, a key ACC matchup. Exclusive coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific from the D. Dome. And I'll be down here, down at Chapel Hill. I can't wait to get down here for that rambling wreck in North Carolina. 
Well, this has been everything we expected, maybe a little more tonight. 144 left in a two-point game, and there's Purdue's story taking a lot, haven't made many. They're four for 14, Iowa one for four. Remember this, Purdue's got some excellent three-point shooters, though, and Doug Lee, and also Lewis, and also when you think about it, if you look at Stevens, hey, percentages are on his side. He's come up with the brick the last two times. Maybe the third one will go his way. Purdue not shooting well in this half. 32%. Iowa's been a lot more consistent than that. It's amazing that you got a chance to win a game, Mike, shooting 32% in a sure. half against a team of quality like Iowa. I'm so impressed with the Iowa Hawkeyes in that they've really been able to stand up against adversity. They lose their star player, Marble, to the sideline. Yet here they are with the lead. They're number one. Everybody wants to beat them right now. And I know Purdue and their fans were really up for tonight's game. I don't think there's any doubt three of the top five teams in the country come out of this conference. Oh, you better believe that. It's and Indiana and these two. And Illinois is not a, not a bad club either. No, not at all. 1.30 and left to go. They're spreading it out, going to use the clock. We're going to get down to free throw shooting. They run a little, this used to be an Al McGuire kind of offense when it was at Marquette. I'll give Al some credit here. They used to, they're running what they call the clock move. See how they isolate a man, and they clear out, they go in. They're actually going in counterclock position. Dick. See, watch this down. Clear out the right side. Get him in an isolation. Shot clock's at four. Armstrong's got to do something with it. You don't want to foul right here. 45-second violation. Holy cow, what a big play. Not to get a shot. Yeah, it really hurts not getting the shot. The one positive side, if you look at the good news and the bad news, the good news is they ran off 45 seconds. Certainly, it's a poor play not getting a good shot in your offensive half-court game. We have had two points scored in almost four minutes. The two points scored by Iowa. It was 65-65 at the 448 mark. Now we're down to a minute. And Iowa sitting in that zone. McCants, he'll give up after a while. He'll say, hey, they're not going to get me the ball. Look at him post it inside. They don't even look for it. They don't even think about throwing it inside to the big fella. This is Lewis. McCants working hard underneath. Number 35 is McCants. Look at him down in the boxes. Right here. He can post it. He doesn't even try that time because he knows the ball's not coming in. Lee for three. It doesn't go. Now they've got to reach in and foul, and they can't get Horton. Oh, what a finish by Horton. A little finger roll. Look at the dancing on the sideline by the Iowa players. Not good decisions by Purdue with that three-point attempt consistently in a two-point game. Horton was fouled by Stevens, and Everett Stevens is gone. Look at Gamble now with the great look to his high school teammate, and now he's going to put a little showtime to a one-hand slam jam stuff. Oh, they rocked and rolled right now in Iowa City. I can see them jumping with joy. Horton has 13 points. He'll go to the line where he's only a 59% free throw shooter. Iowa's up by four. We have 27 seconds left. Now to Tom Davis has seen his club. He acknowledged to us before the game, Dick, about an hour before game time, how important it was to be number one in the AP poll that came out tonight for his kids and his fans. Now, they've been number one for about four hours, and he'd like to hold on to that baby for a while. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They'll be celebrating in Iowa City if they get back with this W, but this game's not over yet, especially now with the three-point play becoming really big, and Purdue certainly has to go to the three-point range now and then foul also. You saw Tony Jones check into the ball game for Purdue. This is Horton at the line in a four-point game. Remember, you're talking two possessions. If he converts this to make it a five-point game, you can go down, most likely they're not going to foul Iowa, get the quick deuce to cut it to three, foul immediately after trying to make the initial steal, get the ball back if he misses the one-on-one, -on -one, and then go for three. Jones trying to get it up as quickly as he can. Two possessions can get you back into the overtime period. But he goes for three. Lewis missed it. Lee with a rebound inside, had it knocked away. McCann follows. Now call time with 12 seconds left. They're down by three, 70-67. Well, they got to try to force either the five-second turnover to get the five-second violation for the turnover, number one on the inbounds of the ball, or number two, they got to make the steal on the pass inbounds. If they don't do that, they got to foul immediately, hope they come up empty one-and-one, -and, -one, and then go for the three-point bomb. 
Purdue coming into this ballgame shooting 38.4% from three-point territory. They have not shot well at all from three-point range tonight, especially in the second half. Purdue has only got one timeout left. Let me point this out also for the viewers. Very important. We mentioned it in a Michigan-Indiana game. Inbounding the ball from the baseline right now, Mike. Five seconds, just like in the NBA, but the differential here is that when the ball leaves the hand of the offensive player on the baseline, it must touch a player on the floor by the count of five. If it does not, it's a violation, where in the NBA, you simply have to get it out of your hands from the baseline. So Gene Cady right now is going to try like heck to put a lot of pressure to stop that ball coming in. Let me ask you a serious question. If you're, an, if you're officiating this game, a game with this much riding on it, and your count reaches two or three and a kid throws a long pass, are you going to have the guts to stand there and blow that whistle and call a five-second jump? I'll tell you what. Huh? If you have the courage of your convictions <laughs> and you know it's wrong, you better blow that whistle. And an armed guard. <laughs> It's a tough position we put those guys in the striped shirts in. 12 seconds left, a three-point game. Purdue needs the steal. Yeah, they really need the steal or they need the brick. And remember this now, late in the game, Ed Stites' committee said make sure to his referees that they're going for the ball and that it's not an intentional foul. Jones reached in. They'll call that a one-and-one. One. He fouls Armstrong. Armstrong did a great job of receiving that ball. He stepped to the ball, and then he sealed off the defensive player with his butt to force him to follow, and he goes to the line. Now, he made a big one against North Carolina State in that game to send it to uh, overtime before they beat North Carolina State. Armstrong will go to the line. He's a 76.8% free throw shooter. Four for four tonight. Look at the concentration. Look at his eyes. He can just about put it away. It's a three-point game. He can make it four or five. But he missed it. He got a chance for the tie. Purdue's alive. And they want timeout. They get it with six seconds left. It's their last timeout. Well, I think it's it's really fair that it ends this way. As much as we anticipated in this ball game, and as much as this crowd wanted to see it, and these two teams knew they were going to go to war tonight. Why not let it come down to the last shot? Coming down to the last shot right now, but it's very important also inbounding the basketball. So many times you talk about a lot of strategy. You see teams turn the ball off over on the entry. So it's very important for Gene Cady now to make sure that his people really do a job inbounding the ball. you got to go to Lewis, I would think. He's got to be your number one guy. If you look at the three-point play for the season, he's been the most effective on the team. Here's what they've done tonight, Dick. Lee, who shoots 36.7% on the season, is at 2 of 6. Lewis, who shoots 42.6%, you're right. He's been the best shooter from that range, is also 2 of 6. He's 23 for 54 for the season. And I'm sure right now they got to run a screen somehow to let him take the last shot. I got a crazy feeling, Mr. Patrick, but I've been wrong before. <laughs> I told you today in a hotel that this crowd won't let them lose here. And I got a feeling, though, we may see an OT here. I really do. I just can feel that this is made for OT. And I would have said, Vital, shut your mouth. Please, there's no way we're going OT. We're taking this home to Hawkeye land. Six seconds left. This crowd has been fired up for a couple of hours before this game started. They had to fight a foot of snow and drifts higher than that to get here tonight. Oh, the place was going wild in the hotel lobbies we've been in. And I was a nice guy today giving away two tickets, wasn't I? Down you in surprised the stadium. two kids. <laughs> Two they, great seats, too, right behind the Iowa bench. And they probably thought they were seats to last week's game. Okay, let's take a look right now. I was not going to challenge the inbounds of the ball. I thought they might put a big guy on the baseline, Mike, and just bother the ball being thrown in bounds. Instead, he's going to let them, looks like he's going to let them throw the ball in bounds. They get it to Lewis. He's got to make the three-pointer to tie it. It won't go. And the rebound goes to Bill Jones. They call a travel. There is no time on the clock. Now they'll go to the score. Well, they got to make sure the horn has gone off. In college basketball, the three zeros do not mean that the game is over. The horn must go off. Now, I did not hear the horn. Of course, you can't hear anything in here. 
Now the horn just sounded. Might be a half a second left in this game, a half tick to that clock. Remember, in college basketball, the horn must go off for the game to be completed. And there is time left. Purdue is going to get the basketball back with at least one tick left on that clock. I'll tell you, they deserve to be number one right now when you talk about the fact of beating Illinois at Illinois and Purdue at Purdue. Can't hear the horn. We were trying to let you people out there hear the horn, but you could not hear it. But the horn does have to go off. And I'll tell you, Mike, you talk about winning in Champaign. Illinois is so tough at home and has an outstanding team with the kid Ken Norman. They come into Mackey Arena, one of the toughest players, places in America yeah. to get a win. Hey, Tom Davis's club, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the best team in America isn't in North Carolina. I happen to think they're the best team, but Iowa certainly deserves the number one ranking. Like to see them play each other. That would well, be a lot of fun. That would happen down on Bourbon Street, most likely, down in New Orleans, if it were to happen. If it's as good as this one, I'd pay to see it. I, now, Mike, you know you wouldn't pay for anything. You've never reached in your pocket Dick. since I've known you. Dick. They call me Deep Pockets Dick. I know that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If they find a way to win this, you're talking miracle. All right, they put one second back on the clock. So you know what bothered him right there also... He was definitely down on the floor, and the official had blown his whistle, apparently, because he's already running toward the scorer's table to indicate traveling. you got to credit the perimeter defense right there of Jones. He did a tremendous job. He's 6'7", and he really challenged Lewis on that shot. His size really bothered him. Now smart play, letting Lohaus, letting Lohaus, oh, that's just a prayer. Lewis throws it up, and Iowa has remained number one stopping Purdue here at Mackey Arena 70 to 67. I say hats off an amazing win for Iowa absolutely a gutty performance playing without Roy Marble there's a disappointed Gene Katie.